Hello, I'm going to be reading The Tarantula in My Purse and 172 Other Wild Pets by Jean Craighead George. Chapter One, The Genesis. My children, Twig, Craig, and Luke, were the third generation of Craighead children who brought home wild birds and beasts to have and to contemplate. In their grandfather's day, and even in mine, wild animals were considered pests. There was no need for permits to keep them, as there is today. Hawks, owls, and falcons were shot. Crows and coyotes were poisoned. Songbird nests were raided for eggs. Anyone was free to bring home the Earth's creatures to nurture and think about, and bring them home we did. My father had started the tradition. He had lined his room with bottles of insects, raised snakes, and fed treats to a friendly skunk in the meadow. When called upon to dress up in his hated, lace-trimmed Lord Fantillory suit to go to town with his mother, he teased his wild friend until she sprayed him, to his delight. When he arrived at the back door, his mother ordered him to stay home and not come inside the house all day, so he didn't. Eyes sparkling, he finished he fished the creek that ran through the backyard of his Pennsylvania home, caught frogs, ate dinner on the back porch, and stayed out until bedtime. Now he loved that skunk. When Frank and John, my twin brothers, and I were young, Dad encouraged in us that love of animals innate in all children. He found us walking sticks and assassin bugs, praying mantises, opossums, snakes, and owls. He taught us the plants that lived and with the environments where they could be found. To dad, all birds, beasts, and plants were works of art. I must have learned this early. My first pet was a baby turkey vulture, a carrion eater fit for witches and monsters and associated with graveyards and death. He was a work of art. I loved him on sight. Nod was about the size of a chicken and covered all but his neck, head, and feet with fluffy white down. His featherless head hung between protruding shoulders. He resembled a gargoyle on Cathedral of Notre Dame. Dad had found him sitting in the middle of a footpath in the Potomac River bottomlands near our home in Washington, D.C. The vulture had greeted him with a rasping hiss. Seeing no parents anywhere, Dad put the gawky chick in his pack and brought him home to me. Dad was an entomologist, but he did not concentrate on insects alone. He studied the whole forest or an entire ecosystem to find explanations for the behavior of a beetle or a wasp. He spent much, as much time as possible outdoors. The answers were all out there, he would say, not in books or at a desk. My mother, my brothers, and I went with him. He taught us the plants and animals and why birds migrate. He taught us how to hunt and fish, to make shelter and a fire, but primarily he infused to us an enthusiasm for the ingenuity of nature. No sooner had Dad put Nod in my hands than I hugged the awkward baby and asked what kind of nest he had come from. That was a standard question in our household when new forms of life came to visit. A hollow log on the ground or the foot of a big tree, he answered. And what does he eat? Carrion, dead things. Turkey vultures are the forest sanitation department. After Dad had fed him bites of a catfish he had caught in the Potomac River that day, I put a cardboard box on its side and lined it with newspaper. Nod waddled into it. I carefully pushed him under the kitchen table, then crawled in beside the box. He looked sideways at me out of bluish eyes set in wrinkled gray-blue skin. I patted his naked cheeks and he sank to his heels. He closed his eyes and slept. Nod throve on all manner of meat and fish, cooked and raw, and presently he was two feet tall with nearly six feet of wingspan. Mother grew nervous. When he flapped, her recipes flew across the room and flour poured up from the cake mixing bowl. This took her from nervous to protest. Dad suggested we put Nod on the top of the kitchen door where he could exercise without rearranging the kitchen. High overhead, he gave his full attention to mother. His primordial instincts made him concentrate on her for two reasons. Turkey vultures roost together at night because they are safer in a group. And the best reason, in the morning, the young can follow experienced elders to food. Mother was Nod's elder. She brought chickens, roast, and fish to the kitchen table. He followed her with his eyes from sink to stove to table. Although mother was also a naturalist, she was primarily a mother and the maestro of life in our home. Jean, she said one day, Nod has to go. I can't stand a turkey vulture watching me cook another minute. My father called his friend, the director of the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., and they made arrangements to ship Nod to a zoo in Scotland that did not have an American turkey vulture. 
When he was taken away, I cried until dad pointed out that I had come to know a truly remarkable creature. Indeed, I had. When I grew up, I went right on bringing wild animals home. And when I had children, they did too. In the 1970s, I was required to get a license to keep migratory birds and some of the mammals. That was an exciting event. For the first time in the history of humankind, laws were passed to protect nature. This book contains some of the stories about the 173 wild pets that taught me and my children so much about ourselves and the world.